Now you may remember from earlier sessions, if you have a, a, a general superposed wave function, just psi, and it's a superposition of basis uh, wave functions of, of the form psi m, and the whole series of them, you know, m goes from 1 to big N, let's say. Well, if you take the bracket of uh, your generalized, your superposed wave function, a general fraction, a general uh, vector, if you like, um, and you bra it with uh, psi m, which is the same thing as, you know, I've got three bars here, uh, there's your um, overlap integral, which is the same thing. Then, uh, since, since this you can expand as sigma cm psi m, then uh, this just becomes this. We, we, we did this in an earlier session, just a few sessions back. All right? Now, uh, in this case, our psi, uh, if we use the basis set of, uh, and you can't see it, but um, it was like the last line of the previous, previous session, uh, so yeah, this, this psi here, uh, well, we can call it, we'll call it, call it u, it's a gen the general form, and u was, uh, it took the form of the sum of cn times cosine n pi x over 2a for, for n odd, right? So, um, so this, this general wave function here corresponds to your u, your psi of m is uh, this, this term, Right? And we're bracketing it, which is the same as the overlap integral. So we so this is your for your general wave function here. You've got your u, and this is this, right? And you integrate it over. That's your bracket, and that'll give you the co the the coefficient, the um, the component uh, in your sigma cm psi m. So if you want to know what the cm is for for when this is u, uh, here's, here's your formula for it. Right? Now, uh, if you've done any Fourier analysis, you'll notice that uh, you know, this, this, this is just the Fourier cosine series. If, you, if you've not done any Fourier um, analysis, then you probably have a bit of tr trouble here. But um, if, if you've not done any Fourier analysis, don't, don't worry about it. But you should be able to follow this just from the quantum mechanics. But uh, if you have done Fourier analysis before, you'll notice that, that um, Fourier analysis gets used a lot in quantum mechanics because you, you've probably seen this before. Right? So, uh, so these, these uh, coefficients now, these complex numbers, are in fact just uh, Fourier amplitudes, if, uh, if you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. So, if not, don't, don't worry about it too much. If you do, uh, then you'll recognize these, these Cs as just Fourier amplitudes. Okay, now uh, let's do another example. Um, in this case, uh, it's still, we're still working with the infinite square world, but this time the, the walls, the barriers, are now uh, twice as close. Uh, so instead of the infinite potential barriers, the walls, uh, existing at x equals plus and minus a, they now exist at plus and minus a over 2, right? So the, so the width, the width of your potential world is suddenly halved. So uh, that means, um, that means that your wave function uh, then takes this form, right? That's just, uh, just changing the a's a little bit. And so before you had a 2a, or you've halved it, so it's not just a. So that's the general form of your Schrodinger equation for the infinite square well potential. Um, right? And we're talking about the ground state, we're talking about a particle in the ground state, the lowest energy state, so E1, uh, and um, you, that's why you get this, this term. Um, if you have a look at the, uh, the formula we got for the previous, in the previous um, session, uh, that you had an energy term in here. So for, for when n uh, is 1, uh, en, well, there's, there's an e1 in, in there, if you think about it a bit. Okay, now, uh, this may sound a bit artificial, but it's to um, explain to you 
how you can use uh, these these wave these these terms uh, to expand uh, to to express any uh, any wave function in terms in terms of these basis wave functions. Okay, so uh, now what happens now is that very quickly these walls that uh, existed at uh, x is plus or minus a over two very suddenly uh, the the width goes back to to, the, to what we were talking about before to plus or minus a so in other so in other words the, the width of your um, potential world suddenly doubles in size again so it's gone from like a over two back to a plus or minus a right so so that means the this uh, where is it That this this wave function. Uh, oh, now t. Here's here's your general solution for when your walls are at plus or minus a over two. You've got this term here. Okay. Now at t equals zero, very quickly, uh, hypothetically, your um, potential well, the the width doubles. Okay. So uh, your wave function now, um, when t is zero, so all this this exponential term just drops out, and you, you're just left with this expression. Okay. But, but this expression was derived with the old boundary conditions, meaning, meaning the, uh, the potential barrier uh, was situated at uh, plus or minus a over 2. But now, uh, you know, for, for t greater than 0, the boundary conditions have changed. Now the infinite walls, um, where the potential, you know, beyond which the potential goes to infinity, they've now moved from plus or minus a over 2 to plus or minus a, right? So this this is no longer uh, this is no longer a solution in a sense for, for the new boundary condition, right? the doubling of the width. So, but it is the starting uh, state at time t equals zero. So uh, we can we can then express this as uh, using the basis states that we found earlier when the uh, um, the infinite barrier were situated plus or minus a and, and they were uh, they were of the form uh, cosine n pi x over 2a okay. so uh, well here yeah yeah so let's now uh, let's let's find